All right, welcome to episode 83 as we discuss the saddest museum in the world, <laughs> which is apparently in Burbank. No, which that was the, no, the one in Burbank is only semi-sad compared to the one in Oregon. All right, but, but the one in Burbank that we saw a direction to yeah. is, you say you've been there, and it's yeah. just this dude's house and a couple of cars. It's a, it's a dude's house, like a couple of guys' house, and uh, then there's like some cars and some Burbank memorabilia, and an actual museum. Well, they say museum complex, and it's like a house and some old Burbank shit. But you said in, you were in, um, in Oregon. In Oregon, yeah. There's a, there was, I was on a road trip, and there was a museum that was built as a car museum. And we went... And we're in Oregon, roughly. Uh, uh, Astoria. Where is that like, referenced to, like, uh, Portland? It's, <laughs> it's near the border. Near the border of California? Near the yeah. border to, to Washington? California, I think. Okay. Or maybe the other way around. So, like, southern coast area? Yeah, it's not. It's inland a little. But it's, yeah, it's where Goonies was filmed. Okay, it's where that takes place. Uh, uh, if it was a Goonies museum, I'd be like, "That's a cool museum." There's a house everyone goes to. I'd be like, uh, <laughs> "So it's a Goonies house you can go to." Yeah, but there's people living in it, so you gotta like schedule it. Really go to the house. You can be near the house. Yeah. Um, but right. uh, yeah, so it was just a place where, like built as a car museum, and it was just like six cars. <laughs> Like, one of them was built, like I said, it's Charlie Chaplin's car. Okay. But in the back seat was, like, a violin case and a Tommy gun. You know, like, Charlie Chaplin would have done. Oh, yeah. He totally was a gangster, man. <laughs> uh, and there was just a bunch of old stuff. Just, you know, a bunch of old crap. It was just, like, like someone emptied Grandpa's barn and, like, charged five bucks to enter it. Charlie it's... Chaplin, the gangster the Untouchables never got. Right. <laughs> that hard-boiled Charlie Chaplin film noir star. Yeah, it's, it was uh, it was great. It was fun to go to though. I'm glad I did it. Um, we like to go into like weird. We went to a miniature place up in Ben or uh, Vancouver Island somewhere in Victoria. Road trip. Yeah, I I fucking dug it, but I can't afford it. She was more or less putting the bill for that. So I was so I had a client. Um, it was supposed to be in Santa Barbara, which is a pretty nice town. Right. But the guy ended up it was Santa Barbara County, but his court case was actually out of like. I'm trying to think of Santa Maria. It was like an hour and a half north by like PCH. Right. And like, so I have to go some, some winding roads, see fucking eagles flying around. <laughs> and I get there, and I'm super pissed. But the next time I go there, I'm at least ready for it. I'm planning on it. So I get a hotel, and I get there, and I'm like, I have like an hour to kill before they call the case. Or it was like, it's like, it's exactly called the case, but I don't want to drive, drive back right away. Right. So I look, and they got this like natural history museum. But it's in a fucking. Sh- it's in like one building, like it's, and it's like, but it's like a like a like a shack, like it's like it's, it's it has like a ranch house, like it's got it's got one floor and it's about like twenty feet wide and about a hundred feet long. Right. And I'm like, all right. And I go in there. It's like suggest donations. I get like a dollar. Right. And I walk in, and it's got like like three <laughs> racks of fossils and a diorama in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm just like. Really stretched the definition museum. Like it had like placards, and it was about like I guess specifically that area right. and and fossils from like that part of town. But I was like, "What are you doing?" Uh, where's your optimism? <laughs> we went to one up in um, Mendocino area. It was a museum, and it was like a room full of a bunch of china, basically, and then some like uh, newspaper clippings and folders. And then a really fucking mean owl. Oh, there's an owl? Yeah, the lady had an owl. It was like, hated everyone, including her. Are there friendly owls? Probably not. The internet tries to make you think so, but they're fucking owls. Yeah. Uh, like, they don't, they're not, they're not housebroken. We were, uh, we were heading down the coast towards, uh, uh, the dude's fucking castle, first castle. We we're heading down the coast that way. But we were up towards like Big Surge and uh, on these little outlets. I'm always looking at the outlets because my car is slow and I have to let people buy. Okay. So I was looking ahead at the outlets and there was a lady standing there with what looked like a fucking old TV antenna. Uh huh. Like scanning the sky. Okay. It was like, I'm going to stop because I want to know what that's all about. <laughs> and what was it about? Uh, it turns out that uh, she was a condor researcher and they had lost a condor. <laughs> and that's. That's how it, she just goes out to the furthest point she can find on the coast 
and scans the sky looking for his fucking transmitter thing to keep track because there's like a countable number of condors left. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like looking for a needle in a haystack? No, it's like looking for a needle in, <laughs> in the entire West Coast. Yeah, it was great. No, but I'm saying like there's only like you know 75 condors. Right. It's like looking for a needle in one cabinet <laughs> of hay, <laughs> or in a pile right. of 60 other needles. <laughs> It's very much doable. Um, I went, actually went to the to the LA Zoo because um, I just got my new membership card, right. and this was like um, I don't know, it was a couple weeks back. I had I, I had free time, and uh, and the, the uh, there's a condor there, and it's actually his wings were extended, and of course this is the time I decide not to bring my camera because I'm like, oh, I just want to pick pictures. I want to experience it. And fucking, and, and I got to see the actual wings, wingspan, which is about like ten feet. In the perfect world, this unfucking explained supermarket car is out here giving people superpowers because there's some sort of secret group. Well, since you can't see this, so what had been no, 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 there's a car with Pegasus marked on it, and F4 and mobile, and something about sports. There's no context for it, so I assume no. there's a secretive organization like handing out power rings and shit. Yeah, so you have wings, and then you can fly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's a useful power. I got wings. Are you bulletproof? No, I, I feel like any super power, power that doesn't either make you invisible or bulletproof <laughs> is just not really helpful in today's world. Yeah, Josh Snyder is the whole thing about Rocketeer. It's like, <laughs> it's just a rock pack. Which I, it's funny. We should, we should watch Josh do it. But uh, I like Rocketeer, so it's always a little weird what's going on. Yeah, it's not going to be out. Um, I saw him do a bit about, like, the spider tank from Batman versus Superman. He's like, <laughs> why does a tank need spider legs? <laughs> How is that a better design? So our podcast is just highlights of Josh Schneider's <laughs> comedy at this point. Just promote, promote Josh Schneider's comedy. Uh, well, he has an entire well, well, comedy club behind him. Well, my first show is producing his play, so... Yeah. <laughs> Our careers are somewhat intertwined <laughs> already. Um, I'm a big fan of that play, and I'm glad it's on YouTube forever. I gotta figure <laughs> out how to submit to IMDb and try and get a credit for everyone involved. No, I've never submitted anything to IMDb, so I don't know how to go about it. Oh. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a card at one point, I think. <laughs> what? Don't go by that, man. See, Ryan, will you play a carpenter or are you listed as a carpenter? I'm listed as a carpenter because I help line some boards up and get a background or something like that. <laughs> Ryan Carby, screenwriter and carpenter. <laughs> um, I was a PA on a, a documentary. I listed as the camera assistant. <laughs> okay. Again, don't hire me based on that. <laughs> you are not getting a camera assistant. You're getting a PA that helps lenses. There's a difference. Well, so PA stands for personal assistant, right? Production. Production assistant. Like a party or... As opposed to a camera assistant. Right. Is the there the actually a camera assistant position or yeah. is that just like... Yeah, it's the guy who hands off lenses and takes memory cards and back and forth and shit. Man, that is... She's just super hot. I've never seen, you know, Oxygen Network or whatever, but... Maybe yeah, that's a... Is that a focus thing? Probably. All I know is that... Just her poster, man. I'm a... I, <laughs> I just want to stalk her. That's all. <laughs> that's <healthy. laughs> I thought that's so. That's <laughs> I'm gonna come to your show. <laughs> <laughs> you think say anything with <laughs> <laughs> Evidence. <laughs> How can they possibly know it was me? All right. The marquee doesn't shed any more light on the why there's a pink one on the Well, we could Google which comics travel in a pink limousine. <laughs> I think that's also a countable number. Actually, I think we were right the first time we did the film festival. That seems like a kind of the film festival is the higher end. Just trick them out. I don't think they're affording that. Sorry. I don't think the anti-hero film festival... <laughs> oh, they weren't exactly, like, <laughs> craving submissions. Uh, we got... We'll have some submit next year. Okay. Um, it's fucking L.A. I'm sure they actually are inundated with crap. I want, which, which, which to me is like we talked about this before, like the money 
is not in the in the mining for gold. The money's in selling shovels. Yeah. Like, running a screenwriting contest, and, and, oh, yeah. and like legitimate, like giving out prizes, like a hundred bucks for the best screenplay, yeah, but like charging <laughs> twenty bucks for a submission right. seems like you could quickly <laughs> afford a, a, some nice reupholstering and refinishing for Veronica. <laughs> Yeah, all I do is exploit my fellow screenwriters. Well, how are you explaining them? Do you think they don't want to compete for a hundred bucks? I'm yes, not talking... I think they don't want to compete for a hundred bucks. They totally want to compete for a hundred bucks. They don't want to spend twenty dollars fucking on a long shot that like my arbitrary taste about screenwriting is in line with their arbitrary taste about screenwriting. I think you're not understanding the concept of screenwriters. If they can get any attention whatsoever, <laughs> like I won this contest. See, Mom, I'm not wasting your money out here. I'm getting someplace. This is big. <laughs> the I'm guy. Not saying I have not entered small fucking screenplay competitions just to get a W. I'm just saying <laughs> that is exploiting my fellow screenwriter. No, it isn't, because you did it and you were happy to do it. No, no put one a gun in your head. Shit. No one gives no, a shit. No, no, but you did it. No one is like, no, no agents call my. No, no, it's the for CIA. them. They want validation, and we can give it to them at a reasonable price. Uh, <laughs> Selling fucking shovels, dude. You put it, you said it yourself. It is the way you do it, but it's also exploiting those guys' your parents. It's not the, yo. <laughs> No one's putting a gun to their head to buy a shovel. The fucking lie was around the block to buy a shovel. Based on the lies they sold everyone to come out there. It wasn't the shovel place selling lies. They were just taking advantage of other people's lies that brought them out there. <laughs> I mean, maybe eventually they got into the propaganda machine, but it's not what started it. No one's like, let's get these assholes out here and then sell shovels to them. They're like, look at all these assholes. How can we benefit? I know. What? Shovel it's store. Like bucks for a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> you thought somehow, hey, we're near the industrialized part of the United States. Let's wait till we get to the West before we find the food. Well, yeah. Or even like, you know, and it might have been supply and demand. Like, Hey man, all the shovels are gone. What happened? Well, you're charging five bucks for them. All right, make it seven. <laughs> oh, they're all gone. Fuck, what gotta do? Charge ten. I feel like this is how libertarians justify themselves, though. Well, look, I don't like libertarians. I used to like libertarians until I realized they were just the fucking GOP in, she in sheep's clothing. <laughs> but, and I'm not saying that they always were, but they are now and have been for like 16 years. Yeah, when you're a libertarian, and you're more upset about universal health care than you are the government fucking spying on you <laughs> without search warrants. You're not a fucking libertarian. Or when you think that restriction on corporation is the same as a restriction on a fucking individual. Right. When that corporation regularly buys the people writing the fucking rules restricting them. You're, you're fucking... Anyway, I, I don't like libertarians. But... There, there is a supply and demand is a real thing, yeah. and it's possible that you can start jacking the prices based on you can't keep product in stock. <laughs> that that's a real thing that happens. Yeah, you but you like learn the history of those guys. They were exploited. Well, you were saying that, and I believe you. Just. <laughs> I'm saying sometimes people, you can't stop them from exploiting themselves, you yeah. know. But I don't have to be the guy who does it. No, you don't, but... I don't want to use other people's shitty behavior to excuse my own. I, don't, I got no problem. <laughs> if, meaning that if you, if you enter a contract with me, right. I got no problem. You, I didn't fucking coerce you into it, and I didn't create the situation that makes it shitty for you, you know. If you don't like the offer, turn it down. Go find a better offer somewhere else. Like, I'm not happy that people will fucking work for three hours at Home Depot to fucking move someone's house. And I wouldn't hire them because I can't trust someone I fucking hired at Home Depot to come to my house. <laughs> but what people do, and I'm like, I got no problem that you fucking got day labor for like one fourth the price of what it would cost for a US citizen to do it. But like, you know, I do a problem with the corporations who create unstable governments in Latin America, which leads them to immigrate here for shit wages. Like, there's a degree of culpability. I've never liked the, like, 
I will do jobs we want. It's like, oh, I don't. I feel like we built the country on that kind of weird labor exchange, and it didn't turn out well. It wasn't a good idea. Wait, what was that? Well, if we're just exploiting fucking cheap labor, it's like, how long do we want to do that as a country before we're like, oh, Jesus Christ? Let's maybe not do that. Well, I, mean, I feel like there's a lot we, just, we agree on here because right. I'm very much opposed to the race to the bottom, which is like every state's like, if we degree like more, corporations will come here and give jobs more. There'll be shitty jobs, there'll be unregulated jobs, there'll be unsafe jobs, and they'll dispose of waste in an unsafe way and we'll, they'll pay us shit amount in taxes, but we'll have more jobs. <laughs> we'll have more rich people. And, and they'll take us out to like fancy dinners and contribute to our campaign for our work for helping get them here. I mean like Foxconn in fucking Wisconsin, which is a huge giant ripoff, and it's gonna create like a hundred jobs, and, it's, and, they, and they gave them like a billion dollars in tax breaks. Um, and that's a real thing, like Foxconn, I mean, and it was for years, but again, there's like rich large and rich small. Like I don't have a problem with individuals being like, hey, let's negotiate a deal between another individual and you know, Everything else is a factor in that. Right. Like you're you're getting paid shit wages to write. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean I don't need to spread that pain. What? I don't need to spread that pain. Well, yeah, but you you took it. Yeah, I took it. And and, and it's financing your rent. Yeah. So are you? Would you? Would you, would you and I mean, that's not exactly individuals because they're well, it's a company. But like, if there wasn't three hundred fucking other writers <laughs> begging. <laughs> and how many people asked you for the fucking information? Like I did. Uh, I'm like, please, six. can I have the opportunity to write for shit wages? <laughs> so They're not bad. They pay better than most. Yeah, they pay it all. Right. Right. As opposed to, well, you'll have 300 exposures for this. Yeah. Have you seen that meme? Yeah. Yeah, and they don't. <laughs> I get zero exposure. My name's not on anything I do. No, I, I know, but like, there's like. Well, we can't pay you anything. We get huge exposure, and right. the artist is like, "Well, that's good because my rent is 700 exposures a month." Right. <laughs> anyway, so I didn't get to tell my Sacramento story, oh, but that'll have to be another podcast. But we did talk about libertarian ideals and the fucking bullshit libertarian party that is today, <laughs> um, which is like just like the GOP alt. <laughs> um, so, well, fuck the GOP, fuck the libertarians, and um, and up the revolution. For more inspiring thoughts, contact at, at Crash Ryan on Twitter, who will not exploit you in a contract with him. <laughs>